I did a lot of postings on a lot of what the West has done against Al Kebulin and against its people. And as we know, you know, with the Ukraine war um, or conflict with Russia, our people, Africans, have been treated very badly. And I did a lot of postings on that. And unfortunately, because of the media's hype about Ukraine, a lot of people in the diaspora and even on the continent sided with the Ukraine instead of looking at the fact that Russia has always been a helper and someone who has um, been there for Al Kebulin. Like when South Africa, the apartheid was uh, happening in South Africa, the Western nations, <laughs> the Western nations were on the side of the the um, the apartheid people in South Africa, and the only people who stood with us was Russia. Russia armed our people in South Africa, the South Africans, the black South Africans, not the people that are calling them South Africans that are that are European, but the black South Africans. They Russia armed them so that they can fight against them. And because of Russia's help, that was one of the reasons why um, our, our apartheid ended, because they were able to arm themselves and fight. So I say all that to, just to go back to say that, you know, Ghana is still enamored with the West. They've, they've opened their doors to the French, which Mali has kicked the French out. Burkino uh, Faso has kicked the French out. And Ghana is saying, oh, okay, well, you can come here. That's not a good idea. That's not wisdom. Every place that the French has been has, <laughs> they've left it worse, worse. And the fact that that the U.S. has opened up so many different military bases throughout El Kebulin. That's not a good indicator either. Anytime they're, anytime they come in, their presence is there not to help but to exploit. Now, uh, you are you are an Air Force veteran, and you are from the armed forces uh, from the United States. So when you see uh, many African uh, leaders. Uh, getting hooked up in this unholy uh, romance between the West and Africa. What usually come to your mind? Especially, okay, we can look at the defense now, no? Yeah. Uh, for example, you can look at the AFRICOM, for example, that was set up to, <laughs> they said they wanted to defend the interests of Africa, which I have said again a number of times. There is no armed forces in the world, there is no country in the world who uses its armed forces to defend another country. Does it happen? Except maybe, they have a certain interest there that they are protecting. Yeah. Because the, the training, the infrastructure, the military, everything about the, the, the defense is costly. So I don't know why one would do that for free for a country. Or maybe that is something that we are not telling ourselves. Yeah, I, I think because the U.S. Um, is very strong militarily and because, again, this is just me being transparent, and this is my assessment, is that they are a bully. And you're probably saying, well, right, but you serve them like you're in the military, you're, you're a veteran. Right. But again, I'll just go back to that. I've only been awakened to all of these truths. I mean, I believe the lies. I believe that I believe that America was a Christian nation, which <laughs> is far from the truth. I believed all of the lies that I was taught since I was a child about this country because who was teaching me? The enemy was teaching me. The people who oppressed people were teaching me. So of course, just like so many in the diaspora, but we're all being awakened. You know, fortunately, my awakening happened again like two and a half years ago. Other people are being awakened now. So all of the lies that they told us about this nation all of the truths are coming out now. So people don't have 
that false um, impression of the U.S., of the West any longer, because everything that they've done, even like we'll, we'll use Libya for a perfect example. Anytime the U.S. and the Western nations see something that they want, some, some type of resource that they want, they will demonize that person. Like with, we'll just use Gaddafi as an example. So they'll demonize the person, which they demonized Gaddafi. They said that he was a tyrant, that he was killing his people. That was, that was not true. So because they created that false narrative and the media, which is in bed with all of these politicians, they, the propaganda from the media went out about Libya. So everybody had this negative image of Libya, of Gaddafi, and said, oh, he's evil, he's this, he's that. And so when the, because the U.S. went in, they bombed Libya. Libya was doing really well. Libya now, because the U.S. went in and bombed Libya, Libya is in the Stone Age right now. I mean, it's all of what Gaddafi had done for his country, all of that has been ruined. All of that has been for naught. And all of the gold, because ultimately that was what he was doing. He created this economic system that was going to make Libya financially independent from the oppressors, from the colonizers. The U.S. and the West will never allow that, never. So the only thing that I can say that Gaddafi did was that was wrong was letting his plans be known before they were ready to be implemented. And I would say this for any African nation. Don't do that. If you have something that you're going to do, that you're going to, a way to get the West and the U.S. off of, um, from around your neck, that, that yoke from around your neck, just do it, create it and do it. After you created it and implemented it, then you can announce it. But don't do it before then because they will stop you the same way that they stopped Gaddafi. They will demonize you and then they will come in and they will bomb you the same way that they did with Libya. And what happened to all of that gold? What happened to all of that gold? We know the U.S. went in and they stole it. So, you know, again. Just but if, if somebody were, were thinking, even by mere common sense, no? Because you are talking of the United States now in terms of what happened in Libya. But maybe somebody will ask it, uh, a similar question to the European Union, to uh, the countries in Europe who also participated in their so-called Odessi Don. Because after they broke Libya, a lot of Africa immigrants started to pour into Europe from Libya because they were getting to Libya, they were getting jobs, they didn't need to come to Europe. Because now, a lot the immigration has become a very big debate in Europe. But nobody is asking the politicians, nobody is trying to hold them accountable for, for the immigration because they have been the one that actually created this immigration crisis. Because if they didn't break Libya, these people will not come here. Now, instead of maybe facing the real issue, which is holding the politician accountable for, for their miscalculation, they are taking the anger against immigrants that are coming here. For example, just to make an instance, no? So at the end of the day, like you said, the West are only for their interests and have always been and will always be. I could not think of it. It makes sense. Why should they be for our interest? Everyone should be for its own interest. Right, but, but not, to, yeah. not to the point of even, okay, so I, I do understand that you're saying why shouldn't they be for their own interest, but not to the point where you demonize other people and you destroy their land. Okay, like, okay, so if they wanted the gold, which they did, and they want other resources, which they do, instead of bombing the places, they they 
This is their pattern. They go into different countries and that's what they do. Weapons of mass destruction under who is that Bush, you know, and everyone found out that there were no weapons of mass destruction. You just wanted their resources. So just be honest, just be honest, just go in and take it. You have, you have the might, you have the ability. No one's going to stop you. You know, I mean, no one has stopped you. So just be honest, go in and just take it. You know, why kill them? I mean, they killed Gaddafi's family, his little babies, like, why you don't have to do that you're strong enough that you don't have to 